Welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya for those of you that are new here and I am a watercolor artist and I paint furniture for a living. So you will be seeing both types of tutorials on this channel. But today I'm going to do some watercolors for you. I was out in my garden early this morning and as the sun was coming up, the morning glories were opening and they were beautiful. So I picked one and I wanted to paint it for you. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so to start, I've got my Arches watercolor paper. I've got my two Grumbacher paintbrushes, a size seven and a triple zero. This is more for the detailed areas because it's really, really tiny. I've got my Winsor Newton watercolors. Um, I'm only gonna be using a few colors today. I'm gonna be using the violet, the Winsor violet, the uh, Payne's gray, sap green, and a, I think that's a yellow ochre. So I'm not using that many colors today if you wanted to follow along. And I was out in my garden and I've got all these morning glories growing on the vines. So I decided to pick one so I can use it as a reference. And it's kind of a star shape. So it's got like the five petals, but the petals are not separated. They're, it's like, they're all together actually, but it just makes kind of like five points. And then right in the middle of the point is this beautiful like pink fuchsia uh, color coming through. And then the center is white, of course. And then it's got these really delicate stems. And then I also cut one of the leaves too to show you. The leaves are great, big, um, almost like um, almost like a heart shape. And it's got a lot of little vines in there, or veins, I should say, a lot of little veins in there. So it's got a lot of detail. All right, so that's what we're gonna paint today. And I'm gonna leave it right here so I can reference it. I also have my two uh, cups of water, one for cool and one for warm colors. And let's get started. So we're going to be starting with the petals first. I'm going to take my size, my size seven, and I'm going to be dipping it in my Windsor Violet. Actually, let me hold the flower. So we're going to be doing this one kind of like top down, um, but I'm going to do it a little bit on an angle so you see a little bit more of the bottom leaves coming through rather than the top or petals, I should say. So go ahead and make your center. And if you want to draw this out with a pencil, you can definitely do that. I'm just choosing not to, and I'm not gonna make the, the circle go down all the way because this part of my flower is actually gonna be uh, bleeding into the center. Um, it's gonna be more of a harder line on the top of the flower. Just the way that I'm looking at it, it's a little bit more of a harder line on the top, and the bottom petals are gonna be bleeding into the center. So kind of get where you, where you want your five points. And I'm just making little reference dots. You do not have to do that and you can um, start with your your outside of your petals here and you don't have to make it too dark at this point and then just make them kind of come up to that point let me make these two petals down here or dots i should say and then we can go in and fix the shape of this in a little bit this is just kind of to give you an idea And it kind of comes in and then back out. So it's almost like a little star. Okay, so let me get rid of those little dots here. Lighten them up a little bit. All right, so in order not to get this outline of this flower, because you don't really want an outline of your flower, um, you're gonna start blending it in. Now where these fuchsia lines are, they come from the tip all the way to the center. So you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of white there where um, that fuchsia color is gonna be coming in. And you can just start to fill that in. And again, this is just your um, base coat. And I'm just bringing in a really light wash of that violet. And just keep your eye on what you see also. 
Um, and obviously, if you don't have mer um, morning glories in front of you growing in your garden, um, you can always Google an image of it and just look at the image. All right, and I'm gonna soften up down here a little bit because again, we're gonna have it bleeding, bleeding to the middle. All right, now we're gonna deepen up the edges of our flower. And you can let that just bleed right in there. See how beautifully it's just going? Because my flower is already wet. So it's just doing what it naturally does when the wet paint hits the wet paper. And then I'm going in and I'm kind of making these little ruffles because the flower needs to be, have like all these little ruffles. It's not smooth. So I'm going in and fixing the edge of my flower while I'm adding the purple, the violet. And if you see that it's not wet anymore, my paper dried really fast, you can go in and just re-wet it with a clean brush and just help it along a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a little more water over here because it obviously dried. And you don't wanna soak it. Um, you just wanna see a little bit of that shine of the, the water. You don't want too much water on here because then it's not gonna um, bleed nicely. I'm making a little more of those ruffles. And if you don't wanna use a size seven uh, paintbrush, cause you think it's just a little too um, large for you, always move down to a six or a five or whatever you have, it doesn't matter. This is just the one that I'm using today. You can use whatever you like. Who knows, maybe I'll even move down a size two if I see it's a little too big for the painting. But right now it's doing its thing. So see, look how beautiful that's blending in. So if you wanna help it along, just clean off your brush and you can just kind of push the paint more towards the middle of the painting. And you can even dab a little bit more if you want to, if you see it's not going on as dark, as vibrant as you like, just keep adding a little bit more. You could pounce it on your edge, you can push, you can just brush it on your edge. And then don't forget to get that little, those little ruffles. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you see that some of these are just a little bit like your little valleys, these are like the peaks and these are the valleys. If you see that some of the little valleys are just too deep, it looks too much like a, a star, just come in and just um, add a little bit more of that violet and just close up that gap a little bit. Because it's kind of, it's got the peaks and valleys, but they're very soft valleys. They're not hard points by any means. And we can always deepen up that violet again later. All right, so let's just let it do its thing. And let's go on to a leaf right now while we're letting that, no, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's do a different perspective of the flower before we do our leaf. Um, I'm gonna do, a flower coming out this way. So I'm gonna do a side view of the flower. So I'm still using that violet. That's the only color that we've used so far. I'm gonna be doing, I don't know if you can see this on the, the, the um, hmm, here, let me put it in front of my paper towel. So it's, I'm gonna be doing the edge of the flower first. So I'm gonna be doing this edge right here of the flower. And then you see a little bit of this back side of the flower peeking through. So this is the edge that we're working on first, the edge that's closest to you. And it, again, it's a roughly with the peaks and valleys. And I'm just looking at it, how it's coming out. It's coming up like this and back down. And then it just kind of goes into this little, the little tube here, the little vessel of the, of the flower is very thin. So it gets thin right away. And then it's got the white stars. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got the white stars, those white 
fuchsia lines on the back of the flower as well. So leave some of that, um, and they come from uh, the points again. So make sure that it's not the little valley parts, make sure it's the, the peaks that you're leaving the white space for those lines. And then you can bring it in before it starts drying so you don't have an outline. You can start bringing it in. Okay. And then with a very, with a clean brush, just drag that purple down because it's really, really light. That tube of the flower is just really, really light. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for a second and then we're gonna go on to the next part and then start deepening them. But I'm gonna put my flower back in the water because I can see it is starting to wilt on me. It needs water. All right, so let's see if this one is dry. Yep, this one's pretty dry. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, we are going to start deepening up that violet again. And actually, let's put a little bit more, and we don't wanna deepen up the violet all the way because the middle of the flower is nice and white. So get your little petals here, damp, and you don't have to do them all at the same time because then it might start drying on you. So maybe just do one or two at a time. And I'm just dabbing on that violet again. And I'm bringing it down a little bit more this time. Just so my flower's a little bit more vibrant. So go ahead and deepen up, or not deepen up, but put water on your other petals. I'm gonna do two at a time. And then if you think it's too dark, like this one got a little too dark, just lift it back up with a clean brush and drag it off. And then you see some of that medium tone violet again. So don't get too dis discouraged if it's turning out a little too dark for you. I, I must have had a little too much paint on my, on my brush. But I kind of like the contrast of the lights and the darks, so I'm not gonna get rid of it completely. So let that dry now, and we're gonna go back to this petal. All right, so let's go ahead and deepen up our petal here a little bit. So just come in with that violet, <clears throat> and we're still wet on dry. And it's darker. Now I'm gonna wet it a little bit so it bleeds down a little bit. You could have totally wet your paper first if you wanted to, your area here. Um, I did not, because I want it to be a little bit more streaky. See, I'm gonna bring down some veins. Like that. And let's do down here too. And then with just the point, you can bring down some little veins like that. We're gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna go on to the um, other side of the flower. Now, if you didn't see the other side of the flower and you just saw this, um, this side, then you wouldn't even need to do the roundness over here. That would all be what you saw, is just this side of the flower. So it just depends on what you're actually looking at. All right, I am going to start bringing in a little bit of my sap green and um, let me show you my flower my poor little flower starting to wilt on me um, they're very delicate flowers but do you see how this green is coming up on the tube here and it's all these little triangles all these little points coming up so i'm using just sap green and i'm just going to be bringing in like little points coming up and then that 
it gets even thinner and it comes right down into a very thin stem like that. So that is just sap green. You can go ahead and add a little yellow if you want to. I'm gonna add a little yellow ochre. Maybe I'll just put a little yellow ochre in there just to brighten it up a little bit. All right, so let me put him back in the water before he wilts all the way, poor little guy. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing our, um, this one here is just called violet. It's more of a red though than a purple. It's like a in between the red on the color wheel. It's right in between the red and the purple. So it's like right in between. It's like a maroon color. So I'm going to use my little liner brush and you don't have to use this one that thin. This one is super, super thin. You don't have to use it that thin if you don't want to. Um, and my flower is pretty dry. It's still a little damp, so it might be bleeding a little bit, but the inside of my flower had these little fuchsia marks. Um, so these little lines coming from the point all the way to the center. And as it goes to the center, it gets a little, let me see if I can open this up because it's starting to close on me. As you get to the center, it gets lighter, lighter and lighter. And there's little, little lines in there of that fuchsia. So I am just going to be bringing in some of this fuchsia. Oop, a little too much. Now this is a really um, strong color as well. So just be aware of how much of it you're actually putting on your paper. It's just such a strong, it's got a lot of pigment in there. Okay, and like I said, the top of this is gonna be a harsher line just the way I was looking at it. The bottom going into that tube is gonna be a little bit of a softer line. See, look how deep and vibrant that is. It's beautiful. And those lines are thicker as they get go to the middle and they thin out as they go to the point. And you can leave a little white also shining through or um, showing through. I am going to start this one. And I'm gonna use my bigger brush and pick some of that back up. So it's just a clean, damp brush. And I'm gonna go right over it, pick up some of that water. Now it is such a pigmented color that it's not gonna lift it up all the way. I'm just getting rid of some of my water. And I'm pushing it towards the center because I want the center a little bit more um, deep. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one over here. going to kind of give it almost that outline look with my liner brush but I'm not going to close that circle because that's going to be bleeding into the center all right let me soften up this one again with just a clean damp brush I'm softening it pushing it to the center and then I'm going to do these also but watch how I do these they're going to be very light when I get to the center there. So these three were more vibrant in the center. These two are gonna be more vibrant at the end. It's gonna show you the perspective of going into the flower. Okay, so I'm stopping halfway. I'm switching brushes and I'm gonna let that just kind of bleed. Bleed towards the center. Okay, I'm gonna pick up my liner brush again. And I'm gonna let it go halfway. I'm gonna take my clean, damp brush. I'm gonna push it a little bit towards the center and then I'm gonna kind of swish it around back and forth just so it's got that burgundy color towards the bottom here, towards the center. 
If you think that it needs a little bit more, you can always bring in a little bit more of that maroon color. If it was just a little bit too um, light for you, with your liner brush, pull it back towards the center. All right, now I'm gonna take my seven again with a little bit of my violet and I am going to be bringing in just a little bit of that violet very, very lightly towards the back of the flower, towards the back of the little uh, end here of where that little tube is. Okay, because that's going towards the back of the flower. And if it's too bright for you, take a clean brush with some water, dab it off with your paper towel. All right, we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna go on to this flower again. So let's make that other side of the flower. My flower is really wilting at this point, poor little guy. Um, but if you're looking at it sideways, but you tilt it a little bit, you'll see a little bit of these petals in the back as well. All right, so we're gonna take our violet and we're gonna take a little bit of a lighter violet because I want the front to be a little bit darker. And you're gonna kind of follow along with what you have here, like that. You can make it as shaky as you want again because it's got those shaky little petals. And start filling it in really lightly, just like a light wash of it, just fill it in. And even if you wanted to leave a little bit of white or like a really light violet down more towards um, this first petal, you can because the inside of the flower is lighter. The outside of the flower is darker. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna deepen up our edge here, but I'm gonna let that dry a second. So let's go ahead while we're letting that dry, do one of our leaves. Now I didn't leave much room for a leaf, but I'm gonna go ahead and put one here kind of where I dropped that, my paintbrush. So I'm picking up my sap green and it is a heart shape, okay? So you can have this positioned anywhere you want. They're nice and big, um, but for the size of my page, I'm not gonna make it as big so you can see the whole leaf, but you can have some bleeding off your page. In my last video, I had said that composition is really important and it's always great to have some things bleeding off your page. Um, it just gives a little bit more interest to your eye. And I still, I'm gonna do that probably with this one too and just let it kind of bleed off the, the page here a little bit. But I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller um, just so you can kind of see it. So it's bleeding off the, the side here, so your eye's gonna follow along with that, pick it back up at the end and bring it this way. And it's gonna be um, behind this flower. And then we could always go ahead and do another leaf. Let's go ahead and do another leaf coming off the page this way. So another heart coming up this way. I'm gonna have it um, hiding behind this flower and then it'll come down this way. And this part you don't even see. Your eye is just gonna automatically finish that leaf for you. All right, so you can go in and just give a nice wet wash, a very light wash to your, to your leaf here so you don't have this harsh outline. And you can go ahead and fill it in. You can leave some white if you want to, more for a highlight. Um, we're gonna bring in a little bit of that yellow ochre as well. Give it a little bit more interest. Now, my petal here is still a little damp, so I'm gonna be careful going around it. Because I really don't want a purple leaf, although that would be pretty too. And then we're gonna pull in some of those veins that you see in the leaf more towards the end. All right, so now that we have our first wash down, you can go ahead and you can deepen up some of your, your edges or a side, however you want it. Maybe more towards the middle here where the stem, where the stem meets the middle of the, the leaf here where it starts, it might be a little darker. And at this point, I'm gonna start adding in a little bit of my, um, my yellow ochre as well. You could just dab that on wherever you want. 
All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more green down here. A little too yellow down there for me. Okay, and I'm gonna start um, adding some to this flower, or leaf. So this one here, that was dry on, uh, that was wet on dry, and this one's gonna be um, wet on wet. So I'm gonna show you both techniques. So this one, I'm actually wetting the leaf first with just clean water. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna bring my sap green more towards the edge here of my leaf and I'm gonna let it do its thing. So there are two different ways of achieving this. And it's not that one is right and one is wrong, they're just two totally different ways. And you can do some one way and some the other way. You don't have to do your whole painting the same exact way. Play around with it, experiment, see which way that you like best. Bring in a little bit of my yellow ochre. And let's go back to our first flower. All right. So I'm gonna deepen up my edges a little bit more. You know what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna blow dry this because I don't want my purple bleeding into my leaves. So, but normally what you would do is just let it dry. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry this. Okay. It's still a little damp, but I don't think it'll bleed too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little water to my petal once again, not going all the way down. And I'm gonna deepen up my edge once again. I really want that flower to be nice and vibrant. All right, so let's go ahead and deepen up this one again. So what we could do is we'll deepen up the edge here of our flower because the edges are a little bit um, more vibrant. And I'm just gonna kind of blend that in a little bit so it's a little bit lighter as one petal touches the other. Because remember, the inside of the flower is um, the inside of the flower is white. I'm gonna just rough up my edge here a little bit. It looked a little too, um, a little too perfect. Now, since one is not really touching the other, we can go ahead and um, deepen up our first petal, the one that's closest to us. And if it bleeds a little bit, that's okay. We can always dab it off. So we want this petal that's closest to us darker. See that? So it gives it automatically perspective. Now that's just a line, so we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice clean brush and we're gonna kind of pull it back, pull it back. And it could be streaky because there's veins in this flower. So actually I'm gonna add a few little veins here anyways. Perfect, beautiful. All right, let's go back to our leaf. Nice and dry at this point. We can add another layer of green or you could just start making your, your veins at this point. I am going to add another layer of green. And this one again is the wet on dry. I'm trying to show you that you can do it two different ways. So this, this leaf here is the wet on dry. I did not wet my leaf first. And then you can go ahead and then start maneuvering where you want it. You have a little bit more control of where the paint goes when it's a wet on dry technique. When it's a wet on wet technique, you don't have much control. The paint just kind of spreads where it wants. All right, I'm gonna bring down the center a little bit darker. Let's see. A little bit darker down here, a little bit darker up here. It's nice when you have a little variety, throw in a couple different colors, like we had added the, um, the yellow ochre before. It's just always nice when you have a little bit of variety because if your leaf is just all one tone, it's, 
not that interesting to the eye. So this one, see how I have it darker on the top and the bottom? It kind of makes your leaf look like it's curved. I'm wetting it first. You don't have to wet the whole thing if you don't want to, but I will just to show you. Adding my sap green, and this one is blending on its own. And you can help it along. So there's not, I mean, there is a difference, but you can achieve the same look, basically. Um, this one might just have a little bit more of a blended look to it. And let's do the same thing here where it's uh, the wet on dry, or no, the wet on wet. And with the dark on both um, the top and the bottom again. You can blend that in a little more if you want, if it's a harder, harsher line. All right, so let's go ahead and make some stems here so that some of this starts making sense to us. Okay, so there's a stem there. We could do a stem coming out this way. Um, there's a stem from this leaf. We can have it bleeding off that way. And on these vines, I mean, they're vines, so there's just stems everywhere. There's little buds everywhere. Um, you can put as many vines as you want. Okay. So let's go back in and finish this little flower. So I'm taking my little liner brush again, and I'm gonna be bringing in just a little bit of that yellow ochre. I'm gonna be making the middle part of the flower now. It's got this like little pistol, piston coming out of the center here. Got a little too much water on my brush. So see how we left that nice and, um, nice and uh, white? Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna bring in this little well, my flower has completely wilted at this point, but, um, and it's not exactly yellow, yellow. It's just got a very light, light, it's almost white to tell you the truth, but I want you to be able to see it. Um, but it's got like this little white thing coming out of it where the flower starts to grow. Like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start bringing up some of that purple, that violet, and start making some streaks. See how I'm making some lines? Now follow along with how your flower is going. Follow along with the curve of it. Um, towards the middle, you can add a few if you want to, but it's like bleeding to the back of the flower. And then we can go ahead and add, once that dries, the yellow dries, we can go ahead and add a little bit of Payne's Gray to that as well, just to kind of show that it's shadowed down there, but not too much because the center of the flower is white. Let's go ahead and bring in those burgundy uh, color lines on this flower. So, I think I have a little too much of my brush. There we go. Remember, it's a very uh, deep pigmented color, so just be careful when you're applying it. You can leave a little of the white showing through if you want to again. Okay, now with my bigger brush, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling some of that pigment towards the front again and make it a little bit lighter because the tube of the flower was very light. So you wanna pick some of that back up, bring it to the front of the flower where that burgundy is a little bit more vibrant. Like that. So see how the tube is a little bit lighter. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in the um, burgundy on that flower. Now, cause you see, the, you see the lines on the inside and the outside of the flower and they kind of mimic each other. So but you don't wanna bumped up to each other completely because then it's gonna look like it's just one straight line going through. So have it kind of off center a little bit. And you can bring in a little bit of that color over here as well. And this one, maybe I'll have this one coming in like it's coming in this way. And then this one I'll have coming in this way, like that. 
and then you can bleed it in a little bit if you want to. So it's got a little bit of um, some different var variations. So it's not just a one, you know, dark line. You've got a little light and a little dark in there too. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with our purple and we're just going to give a little bit of that shaky line look with just our liner brush. Give it a little detail. We're gonna outline Outline the petal there a little bit. And you could do the same thing to this one if you want. Just deepen up the petal a little bit. It just gives it a little bit more uh, pop. All right, let's put a little bit of detail in this. This little uh, part that's coming up here to the flower. And you could add a, like a little bit of a darker green if you want to. Or you could even add just a, like a lighter green, a yellow. Just give it a little bit of some dimension. Like that. And you can even throw in a little Payne's Gray in there if you want to. Give it a little bit of shadow. If you add a little Payne's Gray, it's gonna um, gray down your, tone, your, your color so it's not as vibrant. And then our leaves are not completely um, dry yet, so I'm gonna blow dry their, those and then we're gonna do the veins on those. Okay, so with the small brush, I'm gonna go in and add some of the yellow, that yellow ochre. Now the way this leaf is, it starts from that center where the stem is and they work themselves out towards the edge of the uh, leaf. So let's do this one first. So here's the center and there's like a little dot there. And then they kind of branch out from there. If you want to do this with a darker green, you can. Some of my veins in the leaves were a little bit lighter, so I'm going to do them this yellow color. There was also a line going all the way down the center. Now, you don't have to, you can have a broken up line. You want to leave some to the imagination here. You don't want it all to be precise. If you, you know, sometimes it's best just to leave a little bit of the painting um, uh, not finished on purpose because it gives it a little bit more interest. So I am not finishing some of these veins. I'm not going to do every little detail. That's going to like make your mind go crazy if there's that much detail. So you just want a little bit of detail. And it doesn't, like I said, it, they don't have to be finished veins. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that sap green to some of them. Some of the veins are a little bit darker. So have a little variety also. And then if you want to add um, even more texture, because it's got all these like little lines within these lines, you can add some of it. I'm not going to add all of it because that's where it's going to start making your eyes go crazy. So you can add a little bit of those little veins going in there. Not all of them. And do it very lightly with a very thin brush. And it's just going to give the suggestion that all those little veins are in there, but you definitely don't want to see all of them. Looking pretty. Let's just add a few more touches to this first flower. And I think I'm going to add in a little bit more of the, the deep purple, some veins. Again, follow along with the curvature of your flower. And I think I'm going to kind of outline my flower a little bit. And if that's too harsh for you, just take your damp, um, clean brush, the bigger one, and just kind of bring it in a little bit. Then with a little bit of Payne's Gray, 
just a really little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm gonna go in to the top of my circle here and I'm just gonna deepen it in just really, really lightly so it looks like the inside of that flower is just a little bit um, darker. Gives it perspective. There. So this part of the flower right here um, is missing a little bit of shadow. So we're gonna go in with a little bit of our um, purple, our violet, and we're gonna bring up a little bit of that violet right here, just to give it a little bit more um, depth, like this is the part of the flower that's bumped up to that center point. Now you don't wanna go all the way up your petal because then it'll just be a really um, dark petal. You want a little bit of variety in your purples. And I think I'm gonna bring in a little bit more violet And I'm also gonna take a little bit of that violet and go over part of that um, burgundy color just to give it a little bit more um, depth. So it's darkening up that burgundy just right at the end here. Like that. And then I might do the same thing to the flower down here. Darken up this part of the flower. Now my Payne's Gray was still wet, that was my mistake. So it's bleeding in to my center of the flower, which is fine, you just wanna dab that off. There, perfect, just like that. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can also leave a comment in the comment section and consider subscribing to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day, bye.